Okay, period one, this was the closure from today. Um, this is the function with the numerator and denominator fully factored. Um, I know you know how to factor, so I'm not going to show that part, but I will show how to graph it once you have it in factored form. So the first thing we should recognize is that we have an x plus 2 on top and an x plus 2 on bottom, and we also have an x plus 3 on top and an x plus 3 on bottom. So that tells us that we have holes at x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 3. All right. Uh, recognize that we have uh, x minus 1, or sorry, x minus 6 and x minus 2 that are just in the numerator, so that's going to be x intercepts or zeros. So we'll say x equals 6 and x equals 2. And then finally, uh, just in the denominator, we have x minus 1 and x plus 1, and those are going to be vertical asymptotes. Okay, we also can see that the degree is matching on top and bottom. So uh, here, let's use like, uh, I don't know, pink. Let's use pink. Okay, so we can see that this is a degree 1, 2, 3, 4 over a degree 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's a tie. So the horizontal asymptote is going to be determined by those leading coefficients. So we have an HA at y equals 2 thirds. And then the last thing that we can do is we can find the y-intercept, which we just, the y-intercept has an x value of 0, and we don't need to plug into the canceled factors, but we can plug 0 into the remaining parts of this function and just see what the y-intercept should be. So um, y-intercept calculations right here. Okay. So it's going to be 2 times 0 minus 6, which is negative 6. 0 minus 2 is negative 2 over 3 times 0 minus 1 is negative 1, 0 plus 1 is positive 1. So that's going to give us 24 over negative 3, which, so negative 24 over 3, which is equal to negative 8. So we have a y-intercept at 0, negative 8. All right, so now we're going to graph this based on these key features that we have. All right. So we need to put all the key features on a, a set of axes first, and then we'll be able to determine the shape. So let's start with the vertical asymptotes at 1 and negative 1. Just draw a big set of axes here. And we're just going to put vertical asymptotes. Give me some red for vertical asymptotes. All right, at what we're going to call negative 1 and 1. Okay. What else do we have? We have x-intercepts at 6 and 2. So we'll just say that, well, so that's positive 1, so 2 should be like right here, and then 6 will be further over. All right. And then we have a horizontal asymptote at 2 thirds. So we'll just throw in a horizontal asymptote here. All right. And then uh, we, what we haven't done is our, oh, let's do our y-intercept at 0, negative 8. So that, we can just throw that like down here. Okay. And notice I'm not labeling anything on this graph, and my reasoning behind that is this is just a sketch, and I have everything labeled right here. I have all my key features, so when I throw a vertical asymptote in, I know that that's at negative 1 and positive 1 because I have it labeled right here. Okay. Uh, so the only thing we need to put in now is our holes, and I guess we should figure out the y value of those holes. So we need to plug in negative 2. So we get 2 times negative 2 minus 6 times negative 2 minus 2 over 3 times negative 2 minus 1 times negative 2 plus 1. So what do we get? We get 2 times negative 8 times negative 4, and we get 3 times negative 3 times negative 1. So if we do that math out, we should get 64 over 9. Okay, the negatives cancel positive, so it's 64 ninths. So for x equals negative 2, the y value is, uh, I need green again because I used green before for the holes, um, is, is 64 ninths. y equals 64 over 9. Okay, and then let's do negative 3. So we get 2 times negative 3 minus, uh, what, no, what am I doing here? Negative 2 times negative 2 
uh, sorry, getting so mixed up. Okay, so negative 3 minus 6, because it's x minus 6, and then negative 3 minus 2, okay, and then over negative 3 minus 1 time, times negative 3 plus 1. So what does that give us? This is negative 9, this is negative 5, this is negative 4, this is negative 2. So we get negative 9 times negative 5 times 2 is going to be 90. And then on bottom, we're going to, oh, we have to multiply by 3 as well. So we get uh, 24, right? Negative 4 times negative 2 times 3 is 24. So our y value for this one is 90 over 24. So let's get an approximation, um, like very, very loose approxi approximation. 90 divided by 24, we're just going to say that's like about 4, right? It's not, it's like, it's, we just need like a, a general idea for our sketch. It's close to 4. Uh, 64 over 9 is going to be close to 7. So we're looking at negative 2, comma 7 and negative 3, comma 4. So this is negative 1 right here. So negative 2 would be to the left of that, and then we're going to go to negative 2, comma, 7, which is going to be like up here. And then we have negative 3, which was like, it was like negative 3 about equal to 4. So it's just, the important thing is that it's below the 1 at 7, okay? So then we know that our graph is connected through these two holes, and then it must just keep going up, because if it were to randomly just decide to start going down, it would have to cross through the x-axis again. And we know for sure it only crosses through the x-axis right here and right here. So it mu and it, it hits the vertical asymptote, so it must either go up or down from there, but it turns out that it has to go up because it can't go down because of this x-axis right here. Okay, And then over time, it's going to have to approach that horizontal asymptote at y equals 2 thirds, so we're just going to let it gradually approach. Okay? Now we have our y-intercept down here, and the thing is the graph is only going to stay down here. It's not going to come from the y-intercept and go up, Again, because there's no x-intercept right here. It only crosses the x-axis here and here. So there's no way for our graph to just randomly decide it's going to go up this way. It also must, uh, when we approach this vertical asymptote, go the opposite way um, from the left side. So we know that from the y-intercept, we must just run into it and go down. And then we must run into this one and go down as well. Again, because we can't go up because otherwise we'd cross the x-axis. So then... What we know then is that it must be opposite from uh, on this side of the vertical asymptote from the behavior here. So it goes down on this side, so we must go up on this side. And then we know that we have to come through and cross through this x-axis because there's an x-intercept there. And then we know we must have to come back up because there's another x-intercept right there. And then we just must approach the horizontal asymptote over time. Okay, so... The horizontal asymptote is like in behavior uh, for rational functions. It's like what happens at the end. At the end, we're approaching two-thirds. Okay, that's our horizontal asymptote. Here, we do cross the horizontal asymptote. It's okay to do that uh, for small values of x as long as over time we approach the horizontal asymptote. Hjs just tell us what happens at infinity. So it's like around here, it's all fair game. We can cross through it, cross through it a couple times as long as eventually we are so this is our final sketch. It's not perfect, but it has all the key features. It's generally the right shape, and we did it by just plotting the key features and using a little bit of reasoning.